Hello. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about in detail and in depth the role of the labial frenum in the diastema. So one concept is this that the diastema is caused by the labial frenum and this is the etiological factor for the midline maxillary diastema. The other concept is that it is not the cause but rather it is the effect of the separated or uh, the distant central sinuses. Actually what happened in the normal logical this is your incisive papilla and its labial frenum is extended from this uh, alveolar crest <coughs> alveolar crest from labial expect to the lingual up to the incisive papilla. So with the growth and development gradually this extended labial frenum regress and move laterally. But one school of thought is this that one, if the uh, lateral sizes are bilateral or if the lateral sizes are congenitally missing then the central sizes are not pushed together and this normal physiological regression of the labial frenum uh, from the incisive papilla to the uh, not to its normal position this migration does not happen and you have the persistent uh, labial frenum in the cases of the mid, uh, midline diastema in which the diastema has a congenital missing or you have, you have the back arteries. So uh, how do we diagnose that the uh, labial frenum is in present in between the central sizes? It is diagnosed by the clinical examination by the Blanche test. This blend test and second is radiological examination. This blend test means that the upper incisors is holded by two uh, separated fingers and it is lifted upward. When you lift the upper incisors upward, you would see in the careful clinical examination that this extension of the uh, labial frenum from lingual to the parietal aspect, one thing you would see, you would see thick fibrous tissue and the thickness of the uh, uh, labial frenum obviously can be easily visualized. Secondly, as the name shows, blanch. What is meant by the blanching? Uh, you have the normal coloration of the uh, alveolar mucosa, and when it is stretched, this will start slightly appearing whitish. So that's why the word blanching is used when we reflect or lift the upper lip upward and you will see the proper extension of the upper labial frenum from the labial aspect to the upper the incisive papilla and this will start thick uh, and start blanching. Blanching means it start appearing slightly whitish. So this uh, um, thick frenum is also con confirmed by the radiological examination. In the radiological examination, the careful uh, positioning of the uh, uh, X-ray film and the source is very important. So you must be use the uh, proper X-ray holders for this examination. <coughs> In the radiological examination, typically by the very apical X-rays, uh, what we see a uh, V-shaped or a U-shaped notch. What happened? You see the gap in between the uh, exactly in the alveolar crest area. What happened once you have this thick labial freedom extended from the labial aspect up to the sensitive papilla? So what happened? The bone keep on growing on the adjacent areas, but not into the area of the uh, not above or over the uh, labial frenum. For example, if this labial frenum is extended from labial to the palatine, so the bone will start developing over here, over here, on these areas, but obviously the bone will not be developed over the labial frenum. That's why you would have a U shaped appearance or the bone will start uh, moving downward, the bone will start keep on depositing adjacent to the lateral sizes and you would be having a notch 
in between the synthesizer. So this is the thick label phenom. There is a lack of regression of the phenom confirmed by the Blench test and by the radiological examination. The second thing which is asked when exactly we have to treat this label phenom. There are two, three schools of thought about it. One school of thought is this because <coughs> before the <coughs> commencement of the closure of the, uh, this gap, this is more easy for the surgeon to approach and to completely eliminate the fibrous tissue. So for the surgeon's point of view, they say that do the phrenectomy, phrenectomy means the removal of the phrenum. Okay, so they say before diastema clear. Why? Because of the better access for the surgeon. Second school of thought is in the mid treatment. Mid treatment means, for example, you are closing the gap and you have a very thick fibrous tissue. Then obviously this fibrous tissue will start reducing hindrance and this will not allow the closure of the gap. You would have a very inflamed and a very uh, thickened tissue in between the sentences while you are attempting to close the gap and you would, uh, you would not be able to completely close the gap. So if you are not able to success successfully closing the gap, then it is an indication to do the phrenectomy in the middle of the treatment. The third school of thought which is more prevalent and this is more accepted among the orthodontists is to do phrenectomy after the orthodontic space closure of the uh, maxillary mid diastema. Why after the orthodontic space closure? Because after the closure, when they uh, reflect the tissue, the healing granulation tissue after the phrenectomy will help in stabilization and help in repositioning of the um, alveolar and the gingival tissue around central sizes and this generational tissue will help in the stability point of view. So this is a more accepted school of thought that phrenectomy is performed after the orthodontic space closure. However, if you are unable to close the gap between the central sizes, then definitely you have to perform phrenectomy in between the course of treatment. So that's all about the um, uh, maximum labor freedom. Thank you.